Hey there viewers and welcome to the Soul Calibur 4 basic frame data guide. My name is Partisan and in this tutorial I'll be talking about frame data and how it works within the Soul Calibur universe. So to start off, what exactly is frame data? To put it simply, frame data is the information behind every action in the game in terms of speed and time. Soul Calibur 4 runs at 60 frames per second and the frame data is structured based on this. So let's take a look at some of the frame data charts, courtesy of the wiki on 8wayrun.com. So as you can see, there are various columns and rows with different information in them. Let's break it down to make it easier to understand. So starting from left to right, the first column is attack name, and this is just the given name of a move as seen in the move list in game. The second column is command. This is the input of the move using the notation provided in game. The third column is level. This is the area the move slash move string will hit, high, mid, or low. Fourth up is the IMP column, which stands for impact, and it is the first column actually dealing with frame data. Impact is the number of frames it takes for the move to hit your opponent. The smaller the number, the faster the move. Looking at Cassandra's AA, we can see that the move is impact 13, meaning it takes 13 frames for the move to hit. We would say this move is I13 which stands for impact equals 13. The next column is the damage column, and in here you can see the amount of damage a move or string will do. The sixth column is GRD, which stands for guard. This column tells us what a move's properties are when they are blocked. This info is important because it lets you know whether a move is safe or unsafe, but I'll get into that a bit later. Looking again at Cassandra's AA, you can see that its guard number is negative 4. This means that after the move is blocked, you cannot do anything for 4 frames. The seventh column displays the hit info. This info tells us what the move's properties and frames are on hit. Once again, looking at Cassandra's AA, you can see that the hit frames are plus 6. This means that once you land this move, you are plus 6, which basically means your opponent is at negative 6. Occasionally you will see things like STN, LNC, KND, and SHK. These are all move properties and respectively they mean stun, launcher, knockdown, and shakeable stun. The next column is the CH info. This is where the move properties on counter hit are displayed. Counter hit is pretty much the same as regular hit, except in some cases the two have different properties or plus and minus frames. For example, Cassandra's 1K is negative 1 on hit, but has a stun property on counter hit. Ninth column is SC, and it stands for Soul Crush. This column will tell you how many times your opponent can block the move before getting Soul Crush, and then critical finish. An example of this is shown for Cassandra 6B. According to the SC info, it takes 11 6Bs on block to get a Soul Crush with that move. Keep in mind that not all character wikis have this info for each move. The tenth and final column is the Notes column. This column just adds any additional info that might not fit into the others. You can expect to find move property information here such as tech crouch frames, and whether or not the move requires a just frame input. So now that you have a basic grasp on what frame data is all about, let's go one step further with it and see how it's applied in game. The first use of frame data I'll cover is punishment. Punishment is basically blocking your opponent's move and retaliating against it before they can recover. Moves that are punishable are considered unsafe, and they commonly range from negative 14 on block onwards. Here's an example of punishment. Please. As you can see, Mitsurugi's 2KB has a long recovery on block. The fewer frames it is on block, the more recovery there is, and the more recovery there is, the more unsafe the move is. In order to punish, however, your move must be fast enough to hit your opponent in this state of recovery, or negative frames. Here's an example. In this instance, Cassandra's 33B was too slow to punish 2KB on block. However, if the move had whiffed, the punish likely would have worked. Here's an example. So as you can see, there are two types of punishment. Block punishment and whiff punishment. They both involve negative frames, but in a different way. Block punishing is straightforward, but be careful when attempting a whiff punish. It can sometimes be hard to gauge how long you actually have to attack. The next use of frame data is for something we like to call frame advantage and disadvantage. To put it in the simplest terms, frame advantage is when you are at plus frames, and disadvantage is when you are at negative frames. There are several ways to get into these situations, including guarding an attack, hitting, and getting hit by your opponent. 
Here's an example. In this scenario, Mitsurugi's attack gets blocked, leaving him at negative 6. This is an example of disadvantage. Because he is now at negative 6 frames, he is unable to attack right away. Cassandra is able to beat out his 2A with her I-15BB to counter hits his 2A attempt. Now if Mitsu's BB were to hit me, I would be at disadvantage and my attack attempt would be beat out by his, as seen here. So now you've got an idea how advantage and disadvantage work. There are some moves however that act differently and give advantage on block, as you can see here. Cassandra's BK is plus 2 on block, making any follow up 2 frames faster. In this case I used 236B, which is I-15, against Mitsu's 2A, which is I-14. Because I was at plus 2, my move acts like an I-13 and beats out 2A by 1 frame. If I were to use a move 1 frame faster, it would trade, as seen here. So that pretty much covers the basics of everything you need to know about advantage and disadvantage. There are some more advanced things in this topic, but I'll cover those another time. This is also the conclusion of this tutorial. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out my YouTube channel for similar videos and check out 8wayrun.com for everything you need to know about Soul Calibur.